How are we doing now? I just, I, I want to shout out this, this lovely lady who brought her entire... Entourage. I'm going to go with Entourage, fan club, with her tonight for her birthday. Thank you for that. We promise if you come back, we, we will not make fun of you again, maybe. Depends how many people you bring. It's true. It's true. Ah, got my clown finery on tonight. I'm feeling pretty good. What do you think, guys? Oh, thank you. I've been, I've been clowning around. I realized I was doing some math over the weekend. I have been clowning around this community for seven years now. I was just a, a real so... Wait, we're starting early, I see. Okay. Okay. No, they have not run me out of town yet. I have learned some of the weirdest things. Number one, how to deal with a heckler like you. Mostly ignoring and then crying myself to sleep at night. That's kind of more the truth. But I have learned some really whacked out lessons. I mean, while I've been in this community, I learned from a mime who was trained by Marcel Marceau from the Lecoq School of Pantomime, which sounds really impressive and means absolutely nothing. What meant something was the fact that the guy stood there and told me about the beat, which is when you wait for it. Yeah, that's the beat. When you feel that moment of energy that rises up inside you, that's the beat. If it's about one second organically. But if you go one Mississippi, you don't, you're not there. You don't get it. And I had that lesson reminded to me recently, so that was pretty cool. And that's a faraway lesson, so it doesn't make any sense to this community. So let me give you another example. Uh, is Murray Martin here? Did you make it? Where are you? Hi! Hi. Marie Martin and I were at an event in this community, in the city, where we saw all these drummers were going to town, and it was really cool, and there was a human butterfly in the middle of the room. And we walked up to the human butterfly and said, teach us that thing! And there was a moment this person could have either said, screw you, it's my thing, that, that you can say that, but instead a bag came out and flagging got introduced, and flag dance got introduced to our community. And I can actually, I've actually been watching every single flag related performer, flag dance, ribbon dance, all of these things, I can actually tie back to that one decision for someone to be nice and share their toys. So I learned that lesson in this community. I learned one a little closer to home. Is Valos here? Yeah. Valos taught me how to juggle. He dragged me outside, he handed me my first set of good juggling clubs, and it was really windy, and he said, pass to me. And I didn't know how to pass, and I panicked, and I threw it straight up, and the wind took it. And it went right to him, and he said, very good. <laughs> and so he taught me to juggle. So you actually improved my resume in the end because that's part of my job description now. Thank you for that. <laughs> There's someone else. He's not here tonight, but I want to shout him out. Uh, Fez. Fez taught me this great lesson. I want everybody to do this and, and be careful of the people around you. You've already been drinking. Hold your arms out to your sides. Hold your arms out. Okay. That's about, unless you're a little person or very, very tall, it's about five feet. If you are a little person we're actually hiring, please contact me after the show. <laughs> but if you are, if you're about average, you've got about five feet. This is the only sphere that is your problem. The minute he told me this lesson, I knew he has ruined my facocta life. I'm gonna pick up every piece of trash, every gum wrapper on the floor. It's gonna make me nuts. But then one day I had the epiphany that he was actually trying to tell me was that I was in the middle of that spot. And so it was my job to become a better person. So I could then improve and affect other things. And I, I worked out, you know, on the extension of that, I worked out, hey, anything outside that five feet that I really want to change, it's one of two things. It's either envy or transference. Yeah, it's kind of deep from a clown, I know. <laughs> so that was in this, that was somebody who comes here. But let me tell you about this stage, because we, we just talked a lot about this chunk of wood. And I know we get really weird about the chunk of wood. But this chunk of wood has given us some great lessons. How many people here know James Canavan? Yeah. James Canavan is a musician and poet. He is a fantastic wordsmith. And early in the days of this, this madhouse, he came up here and he talked about something called object manipulation. That's a fancy term people who juggle like to use so we sound important and get girls. <laughs> it does not work. Oh my God. Oh. I don't judge. 
but here's the news flash. Really, for a long time, all the jugglers were boys. It only recently changed around here, and I'm very excited about that. So it was working just fine for them, I guess. Here's the thing. We had this, we, we have these lessons that we learned. And, and he came in and he talked about object manipulation and he pointed out something I thought was really cool. You don't have to be a juggler. I know mime and juggling is probably not the thrill of probably the new people in the back. I'm, I'm guessing that's just not for you. But here's the thing. He talked about how spinning a pen was manipulating the universe. How moving a forklift at your job or, or if you're carrying a tray full of drinks and you artfully get through a room, that's manipulating the universe. And then he told us why and he imparted a lesson that has, again, affected my life. He said, everything is spinning. If somewhere at, at the core of your being, you know the whole universe is rushing. This planet is hurtling through space, which is a really screwed up thing to say when you're trying to hold still. And we hold on to something, we, we manipulate, we play with it in hopes of attaining just a moment of control. And we know, it's, we know it's a crock. I know it's a crock, you know it's a crock, but it makes us feel better for a split second. And the lesson I learned from that is that sometimes the best thing really happens when you let go and you just flow with it. And that's what I learned here. You are surrounded by the most amazing people I've ever met. They sing, they dance. They, there will be a dick joke later tonight without question <laughs> that will change the energy of this room. It will fix the energy of this room. And that's the thing, everybody's buying into this crazy idea of building something beautiful. And we're doing it, and it's working. If you get a chance tonight, now the people who run the show, you're not gonna get to talk to them tonight. We're gonna be going mad forever. Come to one of our other events and, uh, and come talk to us. We wanna talk to you, we wanna hear what you think, but meet the other people in this room. You'll get a chance later. Have one new interaction, I guarantee you, someone is going to say something deep or stupid, and it's going to change your life. <laughs> And that, my friends, it will be both. And you know what we call that? We call that the open stage, my friends. Welcome. <laughs>